Welcome to the Borden Scale Podcast. Nice. At, oh, at night. Get out of here. What? Bye. Our producer Sweet is, dreams. Producer is wasting our time and money. And at you know what? You're night. fired. Go speak to Stacy in HR, please. <laughs> no, who is it? What's the Kanban lady? Laura. No. Laura. No. Lisa. Some. Sandra. Sandra. That's what it is. Go talk to Sandra speak, in HR. Go speak with Sandra directly that right now. That fucking bitch. Whoa. <laughs> well, we made well, it 30 goes, seconds into the There goes our monetization. <laughs> All 17 cents we're going to earn from this video. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Board and Scale Podcast. Battle of the Games. Board and Scale's first ever snake video. Another vendor spotlight. That the penguin's the only one with any character. What you're likely to hatch when you mix certain genetics. Welcome, everybody, to the Board and Scale podcast. I said some things before. <laughs> My lawyer advised me to delete them from the video. They'll be in the bloopers. The deep cut. Yeah. Um, the Snyder cut. I know it's been a little bit. We've, you know, we've have had a mix of busy schedules, the three of us, but we're back. And we're back to do another podcast episode for you guys that is about board games. I know the last video was snakes. And if you are a snake person... Who wandered into this video just, just know that just check it out. you can stay here if you just like board out. games and if you don't that's totally fine there'll be another snake video up soon we're not gonna scare you away don't worry about it's it. fine it's okay anyways our topics for today snack. everybody's played sorry we, we have a, a small change to the format we're gonna keep the weekly highlights so we're gonna talk about that trivia is a no-go this time if you guys want trivia back leave a comment we have some ideas that involve trivia. We hate trivia. Give us an idea, your idea of what trivia should be if you want it back. Um, then we have uh, first player. And I don't really know. I've got it covered. Don't worry about it. I'll explain it. Okay, we're gonna talk I'll, about I'll some, explain it when we get there. The first player things, and we're going to talk about expansions. And that's going to be the topics that we cover today, along with whatever we decide to jibber-jabber about. <laughs> <laughs> Which will be inevitable. Everything. Yeah. So who wants to do their weekly highlights first? Uh, it's going to... I'll, I'll take a Because I've got like okay. fucking three. <laughs> All right. Well, then I'll go first because you've got three. So if you say one of mine or my only one that I'm going to pick, then... We haven't we haven't played, so we are fine. Okay. Well, I'm going all the way back and I couldn't remember the last time we, we did this picks, but I think it was after we played this. So I'm going to go ahead and call out Scythe. Um it's a no-brainer. We played it for Battle of the Games. Uh, that video will come out at some point. Um, and it's my number one game, so surprise, surprise. Uh, it's also the first time that I got my painted miniatures to the table. Um, so even though I... Did I win? You did. Yes. I did win. That's right. I did win by the skin of my teeth. And you got mad at me. Yeah, I did. I got... <laughs> you ever know those We'll moments? talk about it in the Battle of the Games episode. <laughs> hey, look. <laughs> Just... You know, just don't ever forget who your friends are. Don't forget that you care about them, that you love them, right? Don't ever let their choices in a board game, you know, drive a wedge between you, right? You know, at a moment of weakness, <laughs> man got in my way. <laughs> but it Kevin, worked out. Kevin could see his W slowly slipping out of his old and crusty grasp. <laughs> but it's okay, because I still got fourth place. <laughs> Uh, I was so worried, too. Yeah, so Scythe, <laughs> number one game. Got to play it. Played it for the BOTG. Painted miniatures look great on the board. If I do so, say so myself. I sure am sure myself. Sure, sure. They did look really good. Yeah. That was, uh, I thought that was really cool to play with those, not just have, like, plain blank colored minis. And I'm almost done. I have six wind ships to paint, and then I'm finally done with all of it. Do you have them posted on your Instagram? I do have most of the, the content. Uh, posted. Um, the I painted still have, stuff? Yeah, all the painted stuff's on there, so you can see it there. Yeah, check out um, his Instagram. You'll see the yeah. painted side stuff. Rasputin and Vespa, wherever the other one from the expansion, Rise of Fenris, are coming up soon, and then all the, the wind ships will be up eventually. So, yeah. So that's me. All right. My weekly highlight, surprise, surprise, for Dwayne, I'm sure, it's Beyond the Sun. Uh, Beyond the Sun... It is basically Tech Tree the Game. Uh, I stole that from 
Kevin, because that's what he said. Or maybe, I don't know who it was. It was one of you that said it. It's Tech Tree the Game in Space. And I saw, I had a I had a huge uh, period of time where I just wanted to play any and all space games. So I was looking up different space games. You can't see it actually, it's out of frame. But because of Twilight Imperium, I was just obsessed with playing space games that have some feeling of progression in them. And Beyond the Sun was one that I had read about. And I was like, oh, cool. You go, you research and you get farther in technology and you're, you um, advance, you know, whatever your board is called. You're, you automate things that happen in your, is it your faction. civilization, your faction? So there's a sense of progress. And I had been wanting to play that for a long time. I almost bought it from like eBay or something because I couldn't find it anywhere. I ended up not doing that for whatever reason. And then the other day, I had mentioned that I wanted to play, and Dwayne was like, oh, I have it, let's play. So he brought it. I, before playing, because it's been a while since that whole period happened where I was just wanting to play space games, I was like not expecting anything of it, and it ended up being way better than I was thinking I was that it was going to be for me. I really liked it. That was really cool. I had a lot of fun playing it. I felt I got that feeling that I wanted of, wow, I'm really progressing and I'm able to do more stuff. And it has this really cool, not really a mechanism, but a huge part of the game is that you are building up researching technologies on this technology tree. So at the very beginning of the game, everyone has ac access to four very simple actions. And as you progress, you get to choose the basically new actions and new benefits that come onto the board as you research technologies and expand your faction up the board. And I had a really good, great time and it felt really rewarding to research and be the person that discovered a technology and was able to choose and put it out there on the board. That was really cool. And I really enjoyed I didn't win the game. Kenzie somehow always <laughs> wins regardless. <laughs> Not always, I, I joke, but she did take it from me. That's okay. I still enjoyed the game. We took it from each other. We kind of did. I, out of spite, tried to move in on a planet to colonize because I was really hoping that you wouldn't invest in the next level three research. I was like, that's going to be mine. No, no one's going to do that. And then you did it. I and had it when I moved in. I know, because you have yeah. to. You have to. But I was hoping that because you were like, oh, you need to research two yeah. threes. I thought you were going to just leave it alone. Yeah. He did not. No. I mean, they were right there for me. I mean, it's like, it's on my track. No one was messing with my track. I had, I had like complete control over my side yeah. of the board. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, we ended up just hindering each other. I didn't even realize how much Kenzie had built up because I knew that she had just as much research on me, which I had him beat on that, but he had me beat on colonized systems. Lo and behold, Kenzie had us both beat on both of those things. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, she ended up winning. But anyways, I had a great time playing. It was cool. The game was pretty close. Minus whoever got fourth place. I don't <laughs> mention any names. <laughs> hey, one thing about the game is it's very unassuming. Like if you look at the board, if you see it like on the table and whatnot, you're going to be like, what? What is this? Yeah. Right. Uh, and I mean, the production isn't through the roof or anything like that. It is a very simple game um aesthetically very very simple but it's one of those games where the, the, the mechanics really do come through and really help compensate for that uh and we talked while we were playing it and i don't know if i'm stealing anyone else's thunder here but like we talked about like this is a game it's only four years old it came out in 2020 but it already deserves i think somebody could take it and and put some glitz on this and and make it a really a really sharp looking game and probably increase the the overall acclaim for the game printed meeple or not printed meeple who is it restoration games meeple source oh meeple source meeple source if you guys one of you ever randomly decides to stumble on this video make some upgrades know, for that what game what would they do for upgrades so i like think the it's art more nova a... kiosks just their little 3d versions they're the same exact shape you can do that with the player discs and instead just do like your food thing Make them all little 3D sculpts. See, that's not, to me, the biggest place for that to shine. I think it's really more in the board and the art. Tiles that, for the, instead of cards. Yeah. I mean, granted, it'd be a lot. 
the tiles instead yeah. of cards. Big old stack. Um, How much of that even box like, gets filled up, though? Or is there a lot of space in that box that you've got? I'd say there's like half an inch. Oh, that's left. still a decent amount. I will say, though, can... it's not a crazy big box. No. It's, a, it's pretty well... Uh, it would be easy to take and put it into something like... Maybe some chunkier dice. Even like just something like this, or even a bigger one like this, and make just it fancy chunky dice, mm-hmm. translucent of each of yeah. each faction. E- even that, I-, I guess there's not really a way to meaningfully upgrade it. Art which, is there any I mean, meaningful upgrade? I think art. No, like I mean, there are a lot of little things you can make the coal like metal. There's not coal; it's ore of some kind. It's the only resource in the game, really, besides the, the It'd dice. It'd be really funny to turn a coal resource <laughs> into a metal. Well, I think that's the thing, though, is, is we keep calling it coal. It's it's not yeah. coal. You're not powering your space empire with coal. Yeah. Despite with, what the people dinosaur. in West Virginia mines want you I'm to pretty believe. sure it's like, it's a, it's a metal. Yeah. So I think that would be good. Can you grab my water real quick? Yeah. <laughs> Quiet on set. Oh, dude. You just dipped into oh, his. Bro- you just dipped into his broccoli cloud. <laughs> <laughs> My dog, his beef is strong. Um, at any rate, I think you could. I think a person could. It would make. An, I think you would need an entire redo, right? Like an entire reskin of the game. Just kind of like reapproach the art, reapproach some of the components and whatnot. And I think you could really make it shine. I think. But again, aesthetics doesn't matter to a lot of people. I don't know how much it retails for, if it's even available. Um, and it might be one of those things where, like, hey, if you can get it for thirty bucks, I think I saw it for like seventy bucks, which is why I was like, when I looked at all the pictures and stuff, I was like, there's no way that's what I paid for it. No, of course not. And it's it's a great game. I just with all the other stuff that's out, especially lately, mm-hmm. it just feels like you could oh. get, which is probably, honestly like maybe I'm being shallow. It feels like you could get more for seventy dollars. Amazon, forty forty five six dollars. That's um, but the play the play fifty out, bucks. The that's play fine. outweighs the yeah. The play and, outweighs. And the, and the, the thing look. is, is I really love the game. Honestly, I, I do really like the game. The, its weakest thing is its aesthetic. Which do yeah. you even care? But I I don't know. I think people do. Again, so in the competitive space, right? There are more board games being produced on a daily basis on. <laughs> We we talked about this a little bit before. Like, I'd love to see the statistics. I'd love to see, and I'm sure Board Game Geek probably has the raw data. Like, how many games were released in 2020 or 2023? How many have been released in 2022? And see what that curve looks like. How many have been released in 2024? You can probably do it by month even. And so the point being is, is that it's a growing market. There's more and more and more. You cannot expect a game to be successful in the long run if it only relies on either looking good or playing good. So I think a game, despite having a 7.9 on BGG, is going to be left in the dust eventually because the components, because the aesthetic is meh. Isn't it kind of messed up? No. That just point blank without ever playing a game, the looks matter more. They don't matter. So judge a book by its cover, right? So a lot of people, a lot of people do. I mean, this is fourteen thousand ratings. Some other people are out there playing this game. Don't get me wrong. Um, Seven point nine is really good, actually. I just, I, I mean, you, fitting. you, you just said with with Scythe, you're like, I fucking love playing with these painted up miniatures. Yep. I would, I would have much rather done that than play with these gray. Yep. And then imagine instead of having things. miniatures, you had standees, or instead of standees, you had like cardboard tokens. Yeah, because it's right. like functionally it would be the same it is functionally it's exactly the same and you could probably save a lot of money on the production of the game or whatever and it all could just i think it's just toy factor yeah fucking love touching this shit i love playing with it it looks so cool and so again i don't this is very uh this is very bougie douchey right like there's a certain point where when you have a certain amount of games right when you're adding stuff to your collection you want it to hit both of those. You want it to look good, and you want it to be a good game. So, you know. Um, I'm just sad that I think I was already on the fence of letting it pass me by. Mm. Because it, it didn't look like it would give me the bang for the buck, you know. Yeah. But now that I've gotten to play it, I would pay the $50 happily, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm just saying. I, I think the $50 would be fine. I mean, For it, me, if I saw this game go to crowdfunding as a upgraded edition, that's where you'd sell me. I like the way that it looks. It looks very clean and like it looks like a big computer. And I like I think I think that's what it like it's very I mean sterile. that's kind of the the way it feels. Like it feel it feels like I'm like like in a lab almost. Like it's there's whites sterile. and blues and just like not too bright, not too dark. You know what's really funny though is I feel like they most of the main board, the faction boards especially sterile. They're just oh, yeah. white. Just white, yeah. And then they the exploration board and the little the system cards, they went crazy. They went nuts. You know, <laughs> it's like so colorful. All the systems, you know, unique names, some thematically Wolf, three, from five, nine. from old people stuff, you know. <laughs> but it, you know, it looks really nice. And it's just funny to see that <laughs> that colorful piece of the game that's just on the side, you know? And it is very much on the side because the main board is big enough that the main exploration board, huge. like, it was it, it was kind of funny smaller. because I was like, you didn't really, th- like, when you set up the game and whatnot, you're like, all right, cool, like, this is clearly, obviously, the thing that's going to matter the most, and you have this thing that's kind of off on the side, especially the way you also taught the rules. You taught, like, most of this before you taught that. So I was like, oh, this doesn't matter that much. But it, it kind was of a pretty does, big part of the game. game. It's a huge part of the game. That was what ha- almost half your points. Twenty four points on out of fifty one. No, out of you had fifty fifty one fifty one points. Fifty four yeah. because they fifty eight. That's half your points. Oh yeah, yeah. I was confusing that with underwater cities, and I was like, no, I got like ninety two points. <laughs> no, wrong game. Yeah. Anyways, that was my highlight. Beyond the sun, it was really good. Yeah, check it out. Big plus. It's a good game. I don't think I've ever talked about it, and I don't think I will, because I could go on for fucking hours. I don't think I've ever talked about Clock Tower, and I never will, so goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever talked about Clock Tower as a highlight. I mean, it's my number one. Love it, obviously. You've heard me talk about it all the time, it's been but a while, I won't though. talk about we it. haven't talked about it in a minute. Because... I will just start rambling. I'll go on forever. No, okay, but I'm no, no. I want to hear though because I just want to. I want to know now. No one else maybe understand. No one waste their time. I don't care. What is there a particular session, like a particular game, that you had in mind that was like from the God, last? This just I really think it's. Weeks. I think it's just, just overall. So okay. Because well, I'm, I'm not interested. No, 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 no. No, I'm sorry. The progression, because like, I feel like, I feel like. I'm watching my players get better, better at this game. Your yeah. regulars? Yeah. Yeah. I'm watching y'all like pick up on stuff. Hey. Okay, this could be a this could be a possibility, but like also we got to get this character on the script and just like watching everybody actually like talk to each other and when like the first couple of games people are like uh, uh, and not really like go and talk to people. Mm-hmm. They stay in the they stay in the in the room in the group, and they just kind of talk to the person next to them, or they talk to everybody as, as a group. Versus now, people are getting up, people are walking out of the room, people are talking to each other. You see people like, "Hey, can I come talk with y'all? Hey, come over here and talk to talk with us," and like just watching people click, like connect the dots, and more than. More times than not, we've had we've we're having close games. Mm. Rarely do we ever have like a two night game where oh demon's dead, re rack. They're yeah. always coming down to like the last four or three people, and that I feel like I'm getting better as a storyteller, um, sh- slowly but surely. And yeah, so I just, it's just like it's just hitting for you lately. Yeah, that's I like valid. It. I can confirm all of those things. All the regulars are starting to get more in depth in their understanding of the game. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And I mean, as like they're pumping characters out, <laughs> like new characters all the time. So it's like it's never getting stale. It's something that I could just go grab a script off the internet, and that's something brand new. I did not know that there was basically a live 
production still. No, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, they just released pumped. a character two days ago? Yesterday. Yesterday was that? Or they're releasing a... The band's he? They're releasing yeah, a character every month. Band's he he. Yeah. He he. Actually, the noise you have to make when you <laughs> do your second nomination <laughs> for the day. It was he he. <laughs> but yeah. Fucking love Clock Tower. I could talk about it all day, every day. I could. I would play it. I would... I totally believe this. If I could never play another game, I'd be fine. Ark Nova, though. That's tough. That is tough. He has asked me this question. Yeah, I mean... Ark yeah. Nova or Blood on the Clock Tower, and I have said Clock Tower. All right, well, good luck getting nine other eter- <laughs> eternal players for the game. I think that's the struggle, right? Like, you would, like, what the what's the bargain, right? So, like, I can guarantee you three other players to play Ark Nova whenever you want. Or, what's the minimum? Five that you'll play with? No, you said Six. like seven. Seven? Yeah. That's a lot that's of people. A jump, right? I play with seven, seven player games. Because that's the right way. That's the right way to play it. Sure. Well, because you got five, one, and one, right? So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like that's a lot extra, right? So, like seven, the bare minimum, the bare minimum, right? Guarantee you seven the players. The bare necessities. Right? Mm-hmm. But, oh, how about this? Every time you play, we'll make this. We'll make this work. All right. So every time you play Ark Nova, you've got at least people who played at least one time before, right? Those three people. But with Clock Tower, with those seven people, I'll play brand new players every time. Okay. And you'll take. You'll take. That's what I've been doing Clock for Tower? the past like three, four Saturdays. <sighs> I know, but think about forever. How many times can you do Blood Moon Rising before you're like Bad Moon? B- Bad Moon. <laughs> Trouble Blood brewing. Moon Trouble brewing. <laughs> I got to meet you. Whatever. You know what I meant. Bubble Truing. The base one. Trouble Brewing. How many times could you do that before you're like, dude? All right. As many times as I've ran Trouble Brewing, man, I'm not getting tired of it. Okay. All right. I will say that what I think the- there's a charm of there being always new players. Mm. There's always going to be someone in the group. You, you're just going to see a twinkle in their eye, and that's got to be some kind of rewarding. <laughs> You know, Actually, like how, and it playing. happens every time. Izzy and Juan, sure, fucking love Clock Tower now. <clears throat> what yeah. about this? Would it actually be worse to have the same seven players every single? Time? Honestly, yeah, every single time, the same seven players, no change, no modification whatsoever. I don't think so because I think this is me. I don't know. Clock Tower is not like Werewolf. Or Mafia, where most of the game is based on tells, pretty much. Uh, not most of, but I don't think there's been a single game I've ever experienced where there isn't at least one piece where it's like... Big bonus, though, of all the same players. Well, any time... You don't have to teach it again. <laughs> that, yeah. But teach but, takes five minutes. Yeah. Any time someone's been like, oh, okay, you're evil, it's because they've gotten something wrong. No, like, I mean, strong suspicions that push you, like, when you're like, hey, I got a 50-50 shot, and, like, the way you're behaving, because I know how you behave when you have to lie, I don't know. Or when people just be like, I'm going to kill you because you're you, and even if I'm wrong, the chances are, if I'm right, like, you're going to win, so I'm just going to, like, I'd rather sacrifice a good player because you just, just, just you, right? Like, kill Brian, right? Like, None you of never his know. Names if he's that we're bad, using are real. We would never ever <laughs> dox anyone that we know in real life. Oh my gosh, person named Brain. <laughs> All three million people <laughs> named Brian. <laughs> All you Brian's in the world. I don't know. I think it would be. I think you would grow because, like, I won't say I won't say any of our stuff is stale, but like, I definitely like you start to see certain traits and personalities and certain things come out, and like, I've literally heard people be like, "Well." This person's probably evil because of the way that they're behaving. Kev, first night, he goes, I nominate myself. <laughs> I'm drunk and I'm the demon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, not quite that. So, board games. What are your All board right. game highlights? Well, that was your highlight, right? Clock Tower? Or are we going to give you a board game one? Give that, you one board, board game I mean, one. I mean, Clock Tower is a board game. What's your one? No, it's not. There's a board involved. I think it's a board game. The Grim? Yeah, if we're gonna the, okay. all the games. That, if we're going to make it quick. Yeah. Dinosaur Island. Um, 
I've always been hooked on Dinosaur Island. I've never pulled the trigger to actually get it, though. They had one copy at Black Potion. So I was like, whatever. I'll grab it. I picked I picked it up, played it, and I was like, holy shit. I've been missing out. Fucking love it. It's Jurassic Park, the, the board game. I don't, I don't know if they've ever gotten in trouble for it because it's just straight up Jurassic Park. They even got the little fucking DNA guy in the rule book. Like, dead ass. <laughs> Clippy? No. Well, the no, DNA he's, guy. The, he's the he's DNA like, version yeah. of Clippy. Um, but yeah. Literally, you know Clippy is. I do. Who's Clippy? From Microsoft. The Clippers uh, mascot? Whatever. He's a paperclip. Okay. All right. <laughs> but yeah, you're going, you're collecting DNA, you're gaining dinosaur recipes, creating dinosaurs in your park, putting attractions in there, gaining patrons. And the thing that I always love to teach because it always, people laugh at it, is that. People get eaten. <laughs> people get eaten in your park. Yeah. <laughs> your threat gets high enough, you got to start eating people. But guess what? They come back the next day. They do. They come back More the very next come day. Back the next day. And what I really like about it is that there is they they give a short, medium, and long game. I have not I have not played the long game yet, but I've played the short game. I will say not very satisfying. It was literally <laughs> 3 rounds and the game was over. <laughs> not very satisfying. Medium game is good really good length um i have not played the long game yet and it's based on the objectives so the objectives will make it short the just harder, medium or long harder easier reading those long objectives i'm like oh yeah i see this will be a fucking long game have 12 dinosaurs in your park pretty much yeah <laughs> so you, i know you didn't mean this but you said dinosaur recipes and it made me think in any of the jurassic Park Jurassic World movies, I don't think did they ever breach the idea of like breeding dinosaurs for food for people to eat them. Like even as like a like a like obviously be like a like a super high end delicacy. I don't Wasn't so, that right? the meals in no. their in their cafeteria? Was it not? I think they were. I think. I mean. Uh, I think they just no, do Chilean it for sea bass. They just do it for uh, science. The entertainment factor. Yeah. I mean. I, I don't know when you wouldn't you would... eat a roller coaster, would you? You wouldn't download a car, would you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> Send me that file right now on Thingiverse. Yeah. Have you printed up? STL. A steel file? Mm. Fitting. All right. But yeah, that's my board game one. Really good. I've Did played you? it like three, four times in like the past it? two weeks. That game. With us? Yeah. Just, just for like clarity's sake, because I don't remember. I don't remember either. Was it? It might have been you. I don't think it was me. I think it was gonna be. Oh. Anyways, that was our highlights, and we're gonna move on. (laughs) Kev. Uh, So this is actually really Dwayne's topic. Um, So I'll just tee up the the start and let you run with it because I know you have deep passionate feelings. So every game, passionate, somewhere in the beginning of the rule book, has to tell you. Who is the first player? I'm going to say it now. (laughs) If it's... If the first player's random... Automatic minus one point on your rating. Do better! One full point. Well, I can't say that because Ark Nova is random. (laughs) (laughs) Is that why? Oh, it should oh. be a 9.9 then. You should go back and rat your rating. <laughs> 9.9 because it's random. Do better. You could literally do anything. It literally for Arkova. Anything. Why wasn't it the last person to have go to a the zoo. zoo? Seriously. Anything. Why is it? There's, there's literally no reason for it to be random. There's no strategic reason for it to be random. There's like... I... I do have a... a I, I just thought of this. Because I generally agree with you, and I just had a moment where I was like, actually. Well, like, okay. No. So, remember, Kutanora. We played it, like, three times within, like, two weeks, right? Yeah. Do you remember the rule, the first player rule for Kutanora? It's like the last person to be underground. Yeah. And because of the way that Texas is, most places don't have basements. But the building I work in has a basement. So... And I'm in that basement usually at least once, two, three, four times a week. So I was always going to be first. 
totally fine. So it's just I'm always first. Get yeah, it, get underground. That get good. <laughs> just get honestly, good. that's the only thing I'm I can okay do. Like, so like, even like the zoo the thing, zoo where thing. like, hey, like, gonna... I, when's the last time I've been to do a zoo? I don't know. I don't know when's the next time I'm gonna go. I could see why a person might all of a sudden now be like. Look, it's going to be Timmy every single time because he's the only person who's been in space. Timmy's the only person who is missing a limb. And then so. at that point, if y'all want to do fucking Schwazi for it, go for it. But, write but it at down. least put it in the rule book. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Home, so, rule, home rule your own thing. Yeah. Do first player rule, You first last person to do blank, or choose at random. And games do that. Yeah. No, nah, you're right. There are a couple that do that. And you know what? Even if you make... Even if you make it fucking beyond the sun, last person to be in space, obviously <laughs> more than more likely than not, the players are not been in space before. There's fucking I've seen first player to commit regicide, first player to be the last player to have committed regicide. Yeah, yeah, it's like. And it's just a, a oh tee yeah. okay cool we'll pick something out we'll we'll just pick someone mm-hmm. usually Even it's then. when it's new players it's you taught the game you go first and you can always and you can always find a caveat for last player to be in space you were the highest ever like since yeah. who can jump the highest go. right now <laughs> <laughs> sure you can mod it yeah. Just pick something. But yeah, I also had no investment. I mean, there are definitely times where, like, especially as things come down on a board, like if there's open information as the game is getting started and you haven't assigned a first player, people look at it and be like, no, I, I really want to go first. Yeah. That, that's that's a little bit, I won't call it rough, but that's like, well, you know. that That's your group. That's who you play with, I guess, sure. Yeah. Me personally, I don't care. I don't really care either. You know. Usually, the like the, those those things would be like the la- or not like stuff on the board, but like the last things I give out are like characters or secret objectives. Mm-hmm. Teach it first, and then you pass those out. Well, I'm not even talking about secret objectives and stuff like that, but like Arc Nova. If you've got all the cards certain, come out exactly, you've got like, and that's even still not great because you don't really have. I mean, you can snap the cards later on down the line, but like. Something where everything is freely openly available, right? Like heck, even a game like um like Star Realms, right? Where you've got like a card row that you're you're building your stuff from, right? First access to that. Azul. You know, yeah, right? First pick on that. But that yeah, because I mean that's only for the very, 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 very first thing that you go and then you take the penalty in the future for the negative one when you're pulling yeah. from the middle. So I mean, I actually think that's actually pretty balanced. Um but it's fine. You will have you will have wanted to have picked a first player before that even that information is out there anyway. Well, that's the thing is I don't think we usually do that though. I think a lot of information does get put out on a board potentially before a first player is chosen. And if everyone's new, it's probably not that big of a deal. But there are definitely some people who are like, oh, all right, cool. Like I will benefit from this. There's also like right? the mitigation for going last. Like you get extra resources. Yeah. You know, or something like that. I also, oh, like Underwater Cities, how the start of the game, there's a turn order, like, there's turn order markers, where it's the current turn order, turn order, and then there is a track where you can move up to push yourself up the turn order for the next round. Yeah. At the start of the game, if you're going first in the turn, like, you're, you're taking the very first turn, you are at the bottom of that track. When normally at the start of a fresh round, everybody's at the bottom, at the start of the game, Whatever the turn order is, that other track is reversed mm-hmm. so that you, as the person going last, are not focused on put it, pushing your thing up the track because you kind of were punished by going last. Yeah. And this and is small, you know, I forgot what it's called compensations. Yeah. Well, like and this that. is this is where it's a good segue to bring in the second half of this conversation um, because I don't think you can actually have this. You can, can't have the complete conversation without both pieces. So the second part is, is about balancing mechanics when it comes to first player, second player, third player, fourth player, so on and so forth, right? Um, games that choose to do it, games that don't do it, um, so on and so forth. I guess things are kind of like what your experiences are, what your feelings are towards it, you know. Do you like it? Do you not like it? What are some good examples, bad examples? I think 
the most common example is literally, oh, if you're later in turn order at the start of the game, you get plus resources, right? So like Encyclopedia, for uh, in a four-player game, for a second and third player, it's an extra coin. For a fourth player, it's an extra coin and an extra expedition token. So you get a resource and, well, two different resources, right? They do different things. Great Western Trail, just more money. Yep. You know? Which can be, you know, can be helpful, especially because at the first turn for that, you can go wherever you want. Mm-hmm. So because you're going last, you get a little more coins. And then that very first turn, you go wherever you want. Maybe depending on what the players chose, you get something really good. Yeah. Your card draws, you go, sick, I'll just do this and then go straight to Kansas. You know? And I can't think of any games where the later in turn order, the more resources you get, but first player also rotates. Like I feel like if there's a oh, game, if there's a game where later players get compensated, first player is always first player, or first player. Underwater Cities was one where it was different, it's which like, was interesting to me because they compensated for that because second and third, or no, third and fourth player got two of the. Oh no, I'm thinking. Oh no, oh, never mind. I'm thinking the wrong yeah. game. No, first player changes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right. What did you get? For, oh, yeah, that's right, because you get the bonus. So in Underwater Cities, you invert the track, and then you get whatever bonus you're sitting on. So yeah. either a point, a coin, or a plasteel. Yeah. Right? If, you go, if, you go, if you're going second in turn order, you don't get anything either, but you are ahead of first player in that next round tracker. No, no, don't you get the resource that you start on? Yes, but for for the fourth spot, it's nothing. Yeah, so which is only the people going third and fourth get the mm-hmm. coin and the steel blast. Mm-hmm. Because its point is then the first. Yeah, for the fourth spot it's is points. Nothing. Oh yeah, it was point it's, steel oh, coin. Yeah. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. So that's interesting. That's about okay. All right. So it's just a little bit, just a little tiny thing for that first turn, and then you're you're competing on your own throughout the rest. Yeah. Do you think um, it matters more to you if first player rotates? And you're going last? Well, so, I mean, this is one of those things where, like, all of it comes down to how much playtesting has this game had, right? Yeah. And how much have they gone through to be like, okay, like, first play, if you don't if you don't change anything, if you don't give any bonuses for, for second, third, fourth player, whatever, modifications, first player will win 52% of the time. And even that may that's seem like crazy. Like it may just be like, oh, hey, it's, you know, whatever. I mean, that's actually probably that is that's a terrible like in a four player game. Oh, first player wins 27 percent of the time. Right. Fine. That's a no. That's enough to be a problem. You think an extra two percent chance. Right. But now. All right. Cool. I'm going to give each of the other players one resource. They will eventually collect throughout the game potentially 30, 40, 50 resources. I'm going to give them one, but it gives them just enough advantage later on, just a little bit of that boost that maybe that pulls it down to 26%. Like those minor modifications make a huge difference. And that's why, like, being able to collect data um, in those types of like playtesting, like, and I think we're not, this isn't really the topic of the conversation, but like AI stuff, if you're able to build AI generated. Um, content where like run games for you on uh, digital platforms you'll be able to get like buckets of, of raw data uh, i think that'll be really helpful for like balancing those things in the meantime you just have to play a game a thousand times and be like all right well let's go write this down you know but i do it is interesting because sometimes it depends on the type of game because it's like a in a worker placement <laughs> oh, i think i probably just want to go first going last <laughs> right sucks. Sucks. i i that depends, because like Raiders of Scythia, in order for you to, you play worker and you pick up whatever was there before. Mm-hmm. So, if you're going later in turn order, theoretically, the players before you would have been able to play upgraded workers mm-hmm. that you, on your turn, could then pick up. Well, I mean, this is usually like first round only, Right. This is, I mean, you, the, the 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 benefits you gain from going first usually only last mm-hmm. for the the duration of a individual turn. Usually, I mean, it also depends on round structure, right? Like, are you wiping everything and then like resetting stuff and then like, hey, you're still the first player. And I wonder what goes into, and I guess this is just 
playtesting, like, but like what goes into what you give those players. So like Arc Nova, it's just an extra appeal per person. But okay. like what was stopping them from being like, this person gets three extra dollars, this person gets an X token, this person gets an extra card or mm-hmm. something like that. Or this person starts with a building. Yeah. You get one extra coin in your appeal. Which well, the appeal equates to coinage during that um, portion. Yeah, but I honestly don't feel like that's enough for Arc Nova. The appeal? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think there's... Um, I've seen people say like $25 is not a lot to start with. No. Yeah. Well, no, it's not. I mean, that's a, that may be a functional problem of the game. Like, hey, $25 is not enough to start because it's you get enough to get some stuff out, but that stuff doesn't get you far enough on the appeals track. So you get this like, I can do stuff, and then you're like, I can't do anything. Mm-hmm. Well, and then so- it's back up. So you get this roller coaster effect of like, oh, I've got money, I'm good. And then you're like, the next six income turns, I got $8 each time. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you just didn't get the animals you could play, or you didn't, whatever. So on and so, you know, I the question is, is that like, even with the adjustment in Arc Nova, and I would love to see this too, because because it's on BGA, they have the data, they have bucket loads of data. Yeah, if you have premium, it it gives you so much individual statistics. Well, not even that. I want the data from the game, like I want the people who own Board Game Arena. To like, and they probably share. This oh, for sure. Stuff, right? I'm just like, saying. Hey, how many times, even with these adjustments, does the first player win? Because basically, I think what your point is is like, is that strong enough? Did that actually balance it out enough, mm-hmm. or is it like, hey, you know what? Being first player still has an advantage. I don't know. It's a good question. Data. Because <laughs> then there's also like tiebreakers that do that. Like last in turn order. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Or who went first in turn order? I feel like those are rare. Or just like whoever's higher resources. in the turn order track. Yeah. Wins. That's but those are turn order tracks that can be modified. So like fractured sky. Yeah. Um, you get to pick your turn order right based on like when you choose to go out and then where you choose to put it on the thing. So you have some agency there. All right, same with Underwater Cities. I don't know if that was a tiebreaker. If it was a tiebreaker, um, you have agency over your turn order. I actually don't know. Turn. It didn't matter. But like the okay. point is, is that when you have that kind of agency, I think that's a more uh, viable turn um, or um, tiebreaker. Rising Sun. There are no ties. It's mm-hmm. not possible because you default to the honor track. Which cannot be tied up at all. It's kind of what I like about... Uh Worker placements, too, is that most of the time, any worker placement I've played, at least, there's the space to take first player. And it's like, mm-hmm. you don't really get nothing out of it except first player. It's so, like, like but that's so I mean, important. that first player could could hog it, yeah. but it's, like, kind of technically wasting a turn just I, to take first player. I almost feel like, specifically, I keep going back to Encyclopedia, that first player action where you get five coins... I honestly feel like it was kind of an afterthought of like, a, this just doesn't feel like, like enough actions. What else can we add? Mm. Here's some coins. Well, you know what? We'll put the first player, you gain the first player marker yeah. too. If you go there. Well, I mean, I've only played encyclopedia the one time, but I don't remember being first player being so important. Because nothing's blocked off. I mean, to, I, guess you, I guess you could take cards. Availability I mean, of cards is really important. I feel like yeah. what, you know, we've played, played it so many it more, times. So, I mean, I can't. So me know. and Kenzie know what we're looking for. And at this point, we are paying attention to what the other player is looking for. Sure. So being first available for those cards can really matter. Because for the most part, you can almost make anything work for you. And if you can also take something from another player, yeah. you'll be like, okay, I don't care about getting just this one big thing for me. I'll take a mid a middling thing for me to take a big thing from you. Yeah. You know? And it's not like when you take something from someone in encyclopedia, you're like hurting yourself and hurting the other person. Cause like you can still score off of those things that you're taking 
that yep. you don't necessarily need to like complete your your color set. Yep. You still got the icons that you can use. Yep. It had a, it had a level I had a level four trait that was relevant to yeah. what I'm collecting anyway. So, do I care about losing one card in a set when I got eight points for placing the cube and I'm gonna get however many more for the set of cubes at the end? Like pretty good. Yeah. Probably the only thing I will say further on the subject is that games that make absolutely no attempt at like balancing. <laughs> What was the the drilling game we played? Uh, drilling. Super, mother Super mother load. load. Nothing. You get nothing for going second, third, or fourth. You get nothing. Um, and it's not a serious game, right? It's it's a pretty light yeah. game, all things considered. So you got to kind of meet the game where it's at and whatever. But it's like, all right, it's still competitive, though. So you still want to compete. So like when the first player has like the objectives are there and they're they're literally just further along than you so they have first pick on the objectives that they're going to 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 compete for and they're going to always be a step ahead of you in resources and stuff and things Mm -hmm. um it's just like all right well i I get like we get like we all get a lot it's everyone else gets nothing right like uh i think i don't know i think games like that nowadays are few and far between i think there's far more games that provide some kind of compensation for it but um Definitely games on the lighter side or games that just haven't been developed enough because they're, you know, they weren't meant to be big, meaty, thinky games, so they didn't get a lot of playtesting, um, you know. But, yeah, if, if you don't got one, if you don't have something, uh, you know. Hmm. In 11 years, when we finally design and publish a board game, <laughs> our first player thing will be the last person to like the latest post on board and scale. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And what will be our balancing yeah. mechanic mechanic? Whoever what should be so what's second, third player get, fourth player get, whatever. I guess it depends on game, I guess. Fourth player gets a like from us. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> a uh, shout out. <laughs> the one funny. game I can think of where the first player actually gets um, penalized. No mercy. Is, no, I can't, I can't think of the word. Um, I know exactly what you're gonna say. Though. Oceans. There you go. Yeah. 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 You. Um. Well, no, no. I'm sorry. The first player gets more points, so you get the point chips, and the first player gets the highest point chip, second, third, fourth, um, because of the way that like the fish migrate and stuff. Like they've done the play testing where it's like, yeah, the, uh, like the way that the decision space happens with those fish in the reef and whatnot. Um, the first player is actually at a disadvantage because like you also wow. play, you play your fish out and depending on like what you have, most of the starter stuff that your features you can put on those fish uh, species. Um, like if somebody plays a predatory fish, they can, they can hit you more often than not. So you, you're sitting out there for everyone to pick on. Just putting after free you. food out. Yep. And like if you run out of fish on your thing, like you don't immediately die you have a chance to get that back, like to put more stuff on there, but you're definitely fighting from fighting from behind if you throw something out there that can't fend for itself or whatever. So they they compensate, and it's not an insubstantial compensation. Like first player gets it's like, like seven it's points. Like, it's like seven, yes, yeah, like six or seven points depending on the player size. Because like the more players you have, um, okay, up to six players or whatever. Honestly, it's, that feels lazy. It's also, but like. Seven points is the difference in balancing. You just didn't you didn't want to balance it. So I think that's well no. So like it's a matter of like it's the number of players. So like in a four player game, I think it's like five or six points. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. is the most. And then the next player gets like five, like one less, and then one less, and then whatever. It's something like that, or two less. So like surprisingly enough, I've only played it like two or three times now, but I'm like I, I don't think the first player has ever won. I don't think. Because I didn't win. And I was the first player we played last time. Just changed the game. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, though, <laughs> No Mercy is a good example, too, though. <laughs> first, you just put your... you just put, oh. That's what I'm saying. You, you put in you all draw, your cards out, and you then draw four it, cards. you're waiting fucking five whole turns. Yeah. There's I mean, no that's, way your that's shit's the, getting that's, stolen. That's basically for everybody, though. Because you get the same thing, and you're, uh, there's other stuff out there, and then whatever you get out there, there's other five other people that are going to be taking from you. If you're second, at least there's one other group to steal from. <laughs> you know? I guess. That, and there's 
less cards now of that of that of that number. Right, that's fair. Yeah, but that is definitely uh-huh. a game where like you don't whoever's going last has the biggest advantage. Yeah, that's probably. I wouldn't be. It'd be interesting to see the statistics on that. But again, it's that's one of those games where it's so lighthearted and quick and fun and whatever. You just go there and you have fun. Yeah, with it's it. not meant to be incredibly yeah. balanced. You just. I don't give a shit. <laughs> the balance <laughs> is just the players honestly pushing their luck. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Can I can I coax you into freaking pushing? Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Keep and going, then keep going. Well, ah, you busted. Yeah. Or yeah. or you coax them and then they hit four cards in a row that don't bust them and then they go. Thanks for that. And then they just stop and <laughs> and then you bust and don't steal anything. And yeah. Yeah. All right. You want to go to the last topic? We announced it, so we kind of feel like we have to. Know. Yeah. Okay. Uh we want to the last topic of expansion content. And when is it time for a game to get it? So more specifically, I think there's two ways we could approach it. So maybe we'll save the other half of this for a different time. So I was talking about like when is it um, when is it time to integrate that content into your plays? Or the alternative way to be like, hey, when, how much, when is it appropriate for a game? You know what? We're gonna we're gonna stay. We're gonna hold that one till later. This is actually relevant because of the comment we talked about fractured sky. So we'll do this for the topic. Expansion content being released by the publishers. When should they be releasing it? And what factors influence that for you and your interest and your like excitement for that? Content? So this, so this, this specifically is not when you are introducing con- the expansion into your plays. Nope. Relative to how long you have, both of you know all of the content. That was the original idea. This is. But I changed. When it. should a manufacturer, publisher, whatever, push out a game, an expansion content to a theoretically successful game? As soon as they got the money. As soon as, as they've soon, got the money to do it. As soon as they've got the money to put forward, I think if you did Kickstarter or whatever, you put, you know, you had your, your game get funded and, and now it's huge and popular. Once you have the money, you you do your expansion at 50% of the units sold of the base game. Print... Fifty percent worth of expansions of the base game sold mm-hmm. as soon as possible. As soon as you've got the money to do it. So let's take money out of the equation because that's a hard one. To, that's a hard one to do based on like because like big publishers, Awaken Realm, Simon, right? Um, many, many others. They have they have the money right now. They have it right. They could immediately publish the game with seven expansions. They have the money for it. Small producers may never have enough money because maybe the money that they made on the first game barely got them across the finish line. They got to go to crowdfunding to to release an expansion, perhaps. So let's look just at timelines, right? From the release of a game, general population release, uh, retail release, how long is it appropriate? Or like when's too soon? Well, it, it, this is not Kickstarter. It's not crowdfunding, because crowdfunding they just put the expansion in there with it. The big, the big companies. For some of it, right? Um, that's true. Um, but then there are Kickstarter campaigns that do expansions, or crowdfunding campaigns that do a, a legitimate expansion to the after game. the fact. After the fact, right? Again, the example being Fractured Sky is doing a reprint and a. Um, an expansion, and also uh, Ivy League Studios. Ivy League? Is it Ivy League? Or is it I think Ivy it's Studio? just Ivy. It's Ivy, yeah. Ivy Studios also did Veiled Fate, but Veiled Fate had been out for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. So there was a good break between those. I think, you need to le- I think you need to let your players play the game, obviously. I Duh. think if you have a planned expansion... If it's a planned expansion, it's not something that you were inspired to make years later. You release it with the base game. If you're doing a reprint, you reprint the expansion too, you know, or you make an expansion years later, you do a reprint of base game plus expansion. Mm. You know. So I feel like you're taking the um you're taking this very much from the producer side, the publisher side. What's good for the publisher? 
No, I mean, for the player, I think for then if it's for me, give it to me immediately. But what if you why not? What if you don't even like the game? Plenty of games that I've bought everything for and don't like. So, (laughs) well, and that's the thing. So, like, crowdfunding is a really terrible space for this, right? Because you end up backing a game that you don't have any idea. Maybe you've watched some playthrough videos. You're like, I think I'll like it. And then you have four boxes of something you don't like. And you're like, all right, hey, so this expansion is a Kickstarter exclusive. Okay. All right, so I got to get that one. And then you're like, well, this one's not, but it's, but if I get this combo, it's mm-hmm. all cheaper. Yeah. So you end up getting it, and you've got, <laughs> you've got Sea of Legends. <laughs> so I just got the other day, and it's got all the content. And that's, a, that's actually probably not a good, a good example, but, you know, because some of those were out before. But... Yeah, you end up with like all this stuff, and like, yeah, it could be a game you fall in love with, or you're like, mm, this wasn't this wasn't for me. And now you have to sell it all, um, as opposed to being like, hey, here's your game. We'll come back to you with the expansion content if it's well liked. I think you give Is, it one fiscal year. I think it, it also might depend on the expansion itself. I feel like if it's just like extra cards mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah, you can put it out immediately. Just don't hold just hold those cards off to the side until you're ready to play with them. If it's like you're introducing a whole new system to the game, like an extra like there's an extra board off to the side now. Wait a little bit. Are people even wanting that or are they like this is enough? I like this. This is fine. Well, I think like Arc Nova being like, "Hey, we designed some alternate maps." Here's a little map pack, mm-hmm. and uh, you can get it in an envelope, basically, right? Perfect. Yeah, that's... While they were working on another expansion. Well, yeah. and that's the thing. So, like, Marine Worlds, I think, is a really good example, right? So, let's imagine a world where... I don't know who made Arc Nova. Um, who made it? Who published it? Capstone. Capstone. So, if Capstone Games says, hey, look, we want this fresh off the heels. Like, Arc Nova gets released. It's out there. People are consuming it. And then... Less than six months later, I want this game printed, published, and on the shelves. That Marine Worlds expansion would look significantly different than what it does now because they couldn't have consumed any of the user comments and feedback on the game into that expansion. Marine Worlds makes Arc Nova an infinitely better game. I think we all agree, yeah. right? Imagine if they didn't have wave cards in it mm-hmm. imagine if they didn't have all those other little things that change the search emblems right all of the yeah the um the universities the university with the animals all those different things right if that didn't exist right marine worlds would just be like oh fish right <laughs> yeah his fish and more aquarium more yeah. water spaces so well i mean there were no water spaces in the original yeah so like it just would be it would be different, right? So as opposed to like I've never company, looked at it that way. Like, yeah. well, the think about counts think as water about the spaces. think about if the base game was the expansion, like that. Like if the base game had the expansion, but you didn't consider it the expansion. Mm. Like if Bunny Kingdom came with the cloud, the cloud area, something like that. But the cloud doesn't necessarily make the game better. So I'm thinking of like games Whoa. that are like. <laughs> I'm thinking about games that like the expansion content. Think thinking about like, games that are good. No. <laughs> that that like, so you like yeah, like that's a bad example because you've played that game like 40 plus times or whatever. So like you would never go back to a reduced version, right? But I was actually interested in the idea of playing the reduced version because you said it's less swingy, right? Than it is with the clouds. Yeah. Right. Um Can not, be. not a great example because that expansion wasn't designed to fix problems that were identified in the base game, right? Where expansions can do that, right? If you wait, right? Mm-hmm. You can also just gain... I mean, there's, I think there's infinite utility in waiting to see what the feedback is from, from the people. So, like, Ivy League... I keep saying Ivy League. Ivy Games. He went to college, right? by the way. <laughs> Not in an Ivy League. Um, it's Ivy Studio. That's, probably, that's Ivy, what it is. Yeah. Um, and it's also I V yeah. as in the Roman or. numerals four, not I V Y. Any rate, um, there is a zero percent chance that a game that they're 
No, I mean it's going to crowdfunding, I guess. So they do have that space where they can be like, "Hey, they can they can catch some stuff and they put it into the development process through feedback." But they're clearly, I mean, they're putting a product on crowdfunding that's going to do whatever it's going to do. And you can't tell me that whatever's going into that base is really spending a lot of time and thinking about whatever user generated feedback there has been over the last two months since the game released. Like showed up to to uh, backers. I don't even know if it's available retail yet. I think most comments and updates that I've seen on crowdfunding about like, oh, we've listened to your feedback, is like, oh, thanks for finding that typo, and oh, thanks for reminding us that there are colorblind people, and you know, we need yeah. to fix this color, you know, these color palettes. Oh, what game just did that? Oh, it was a Stonemaier game. Was it right? I don't know. I remember. Am I? Oh yeah, it's the. Um, am I crazy? <laughs> yes, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, no, maybe it wasn't that. There was something very recently where it was like, get these if you have colorblind friends. I don't. I don't it was remember. like a tile upgrade pack or something like that. I don't know if that was. I don't know if it was the same thing. It may have been something else. Um, something. But we that's have a, the thing. a deck of cards in braille for your blind board <laughs> gamers friends. What about expansions? Like, how do you justify expansions that? deal with player count so like like add a fifth player how earth is like they're shoving a sixth player i don't mm. like it i don't think i think five is honestly five is too, much. too many for earth why it's just like you get to do something on everybody's turn you're actively engaged it yeah but it's like game to introduce a sixth player I, it's supposed to be like that it's so I'm, much like it's like i want to do my i want to do the action that i want to pick like i want to pick the action you do still pick your action on and your you turn. do your action on your turn, and then you are getting the benefits from everybody else's. I don't want to wait for benefits. another person, and then Cascadia. Does Cascadia need a sixth player? No, no. I mean, I think that's a that's an interesting one because, like, like the how do you how do you justify enough, that? But also, like, just there's enough like AP because you're like, well, I could do this or I could do this or whatever that those turns can get really long in between them. Mm -hmm. um, Calico and a game and a game is is not meant to be that that you know, thinky. So stinky. Don't know, but it's also nice to be able to have all right, cool. Calico, four players. Verdant, five players. Cascadia, six players. So now you got three AEG games that play four, five, and six players. They're all very similar in construct. So you can play to the crowd. Yeah, Box, we don't want to play with six players. Box experiment? It's oh, great. Oh, six what? people though. Six is too much. It's a the only thing is it's a table hog. Right, that's the problem with with Fox experiments. It takes it's a table hug. Uh, again, it is these are the games to me that are ideal for for six players and five players because you take simultaneous turns. You are actively doing something at all times. All players are always engaged. See, I don't care about that. It's just like I don't. It's like it. I guess it, it's personal. Like it's yeah. just like so much happening because mm -hmm. it's like. There still might be a little bit of downtime because, like, this person's just taking longer. For they, what? They're doing a lot more. Like, your tableau is your like in Earth. Your tableau's built differently. So, mm -hmm. like, if if I do this action, you also get to activate all of your cards of that color. And if like yep. I only have two cards in that color, my turn's done. Yeah. Now I'm. I mean, it's not as much downtime downtime as one person going at a time, but still, you're. It's like. I mean, versus a oh game God. of a Arc Nova where you've got new players who aren't as experienced and they spend five plus minutes on a turn and you've got 15 minutes between your turns. I would also I would rather do that. Never play. Not that's I a four never, player game. Yeah. I'm talking about a four player game. Yeah. I you would, could still have turn. You still have 10, 15 minutes between turns. Totally reasonable. And you don't really have the right to get mad at somebody because like, oh, well, you took my actions. You did the thing I wanted to do. You took my animal. You took this or whatever. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I got to figure it out because it's a tight space. It's a tight action space. It's an incredibly tight action space. I think you. I think you got to play with a certain group of people. I'm not. I'm mostly in the person that is like, I'll just do. I'll just pick something quick and like. I'm if especially if it's my first game. I'm just learning. I will just. I'll just go, and if it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. I don't know. I don't want to play. I don't want to play with six people. That's fine. Yeah, I just think it's weird that you guys have also like the, like the games that you're talking about like that are six player games or like the ones that are literally designed to be like, hey, I'm going to keep you engaged. 
you're not picking on a game like Cascadia, which would be a bad, it would be a good example of one where you're like, no, it's you just added more players. You have not increased the speed of this game. You have not, not at all. Where like Wingspan tried to do that. I haven't seen the flock mode for whatever. Seven people. Well, that's eight? It's seven. Is it seven? Because yeah. I thought they were basically they were playing like two games at once. Yeah, you are. It's whatever it is. So like, it, like attempts to do this kind of stuff. Like, oh, it's okay. Well, no, I'm just not going to do that. But five to six player expansions to me are fine if they make sense, if the, if the game lends themselves to them. And of course, those can be, to me, yeah, put them out there right with it. If, if they're, if, you know, again, if you've thought through the way the game is played and you've found a way, you know, because then balance it's a fifth player, right? Again, Fox experiment, phenomenal example. Yeah. I just, I don't want to play with five to six players. Don't get the five or six player expansion. Play with four people and you're good to go. Four people. Four yeah. people. Blah, 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 blah. Or you're like, Hey, like me over half the time we have six players. Well, not half the time, but there's a lot of times where we're sitting down and we're playing with six players. Mm -hmm. How many good six-player games exist? Yeah, you know, uh, you know it's what? it's um, more so like how do you how do you how do you justify that? Like, why are they saying let's throw a sixth player in? Honestly, adding a fifth or a sixth player, like if the expansion is just add a fifth or sixth player, it it just like ruins the game for me. <laughs> I wish that the bunny the bunny kingdom one I, I don't wish right because it's not just a fifth player expansion it makes room for a fifth player but if it was just the new board totally cool with it because I'm looking at it right now Arnak has a fifth player does it really? Like, yeah there's an expansion one for it uh -huh. mm. and I'm like I've never why though? Before. like because I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just I'm just wondering. It's like why? Why 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 are you like this needs a this needs a fifth player. This needs a sixth player. Like know. are people asking for that? Like are they like probably. I want to I want to sit another person. Yeah. I so it's an interesting thing. So a lot of this comes down to like your your board game group dynamics, right? So like the more I think about this as we're talking through, I'm not surprised at all that you don't value higher player count games because for the majority of your board gaming life, you've played with how many people? Two. You and you and Ken's, mm -hmm. right? My turn, your turn, my turn. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? Um, very recently, we've been, you've, you've, you've scoped that out a little bit. But even like when we're playing here, right, how many of those times are we playing with more than four players? It's rare. Right, and there's only a handful of games that can even accommodate five, and I am actually struggling to think if we've ever played with six. I'm not sure we have. We have here, mm -hmm. Red Rising. Oh yeah, that was a that, and that was abortion, and that <laughs> was a good example of a game that shouldn't have that many people. Right, that's fine. That's just a bad player count. Like that's 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 on them. Right, bad. Poor design, and there's a reason why I can't sell my copy for ten dollars <laughs> <laughs> because no one wants it. Oh my gosh! <clears throat> um, but there are plenty of like so again, like uh, like when we go play on Sundays at Black Potion. Guess what? We're gonna be there on Sunday. We already have six players. A little bit of why I don't go anymore. I don't play. I mean, it's fine. That's totally fine. I and mean, we're gonna. We're going to be in a space to renegotiate what that looks like in the future. But that's a private conversation. <laughs> Get but, out of here. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, yeah, I wish I had, like, I do very much have been the way that we've been playing for the last, you know, six to nine months or however long it's been. And like those occasions where I'm like, man, I, we have six people. I would love to be able to include six people more often because I am a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a dick. Do I have the game for you? <laughs> but like i'm like you in a way that like i want to play the games i want to play like i want to kind of control the number of people that are there and i hate nothing more than being like oh well now we, there's eight of us here like you just invited random people and oh now it's I have fine to do we'll just play like, well, we'll just no. play this something from the library i'm going to a different group no i'm leaving yeah i'm just like we're gonna break crews up or whatever so like i like curating that i also like coming prepared to play right like if i'm teaching a game i like to have i'm sure you guys can all I agree that like if you haven't played it in a while, you like more read the rules and whatnot. 
Um, Good critters, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I don't know. It's I value I value having higher play higher player count games. Um, that are good, that still play quick enough that the downtime for players isn't so bad where, like, you know, I'm guilty of it, man. I'll pick up my phone and I'll play. I'll look at it. And I did it today a couple times carrying on a conversation with somebody and, you know, never really impacted my ability to quickly pick up my cards and take my turn. But, like, you can make that worse and worse and worse, right, with a game that just has no interaction in between them. And games like Fox Experiment and Earth keep players engaged at every stage. I would rather you just do your turn and I can just conversate. See, I, I what think sport do you like better? Or like, hockey or, or like or football? Or like even or like or like think about I it. I don't like think about better what football. you're doing. Football? Or sorry, uh, hockey, but I'm just not I'm not a sports person. Like general. think about what you're doing. Like Earth. You take your turn. All right. Coo. Whew. Fuck. Green. All right. Orange. Oh, green again. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I want to do my turn, and then if no one wants to talk, I want to conversate, right? And if, yeah. if no one wants to talk, then I'll just I'll get on my phone for a minute until it's my turn again. Interesting. I the the, the sports thing was is that because you think about like their like football, I think, and baseball have something in common in that there are games that have a lot of downtime. So the action sequence for the individual, like the viewer, is a is a is a moment, right? A couple seconds at a time whatever right and then you can kind of like disengage right um in between plays or pitches or whatever versus basketball hockey soccer like kabaddi right you got to watch you got to watch the whole thing because if you blink you're gonna miss points you're gonna miss score whatever like big plays so on and so forth right so I don't know, it's interesting that like i don't know maybe it's because you're viewing it versus like actively having to think about the things you're doing but well, in Rocket League, when I watch Rocket League, if you watch RLCS, message me. <laughs> yes, I'm the viewer, and I'm rooting for something, and I'm watching a game that I'm not playing in. So that's fine. Yeah. If I'm in the game playing or like I'm with people, I don't want the entire hour and a half that we're sitting here being like, Taking blue. All right, everyone, you get to do a blue. Make sure you do your blue, 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 blue. Your turn, green. Okay, everyone's doing their green. So on my turn, I get to follow and just okay. So I get to do this, this, this. Your turn, okay. No, you're doing orange, like you said, right? Oh fuck, you yeah. just. I don't. Oh, just, you did green. I don't want to just oh, do shit. that. I don't want to just be <laughs> fucking on my. Okay. Yeah, I, I get it. No, I mean I do because like if you want to have conversations, if you want downtime, if you want time to think about what's going on, and you want more of that, it is harder to do when you're forced to do all that at the same time that's that's fair um earth i think is different than fox experiment because fox experiment you know, you're all doing the same thing at the same time and their actions don't have anything to do with your actions so it's just simultaneous play but your shit don't matter to me i'm rolling my dice i'm making my pairs i'm doing my stuff multiplayer Good. solitaire and i think it's not Rolling though, right. because you still come together and you're trading. Like I'm. That is my all stuff. that is shared. Besides competitive spaces, rewards. <laughs> he really, he really hates how much he likes Fox Experiment. It's a great game. It's a roll and write. It's a, and he hates it's a giant, and it's, a, it's, a, it's the world's largest roll and write. It blows my mind. No, but it's. I mean, so like the action selection at the beginning when you're doing that part, that's obviously collective, right? And then. The, the animals that you're breeding and they're pushing them out there like I mean there's a, there's a collective process to it like it's not solitaire it's absolutely not solitaire I reject the idea that it's <laughs> multiplayer solitaire there are definitely other games that are f so much more egregiously solitaire than that I think now we're slowly getting into the realm of like what are you what are you looking out for in this experience yeah. are you do you want to do you want to focus and play on this game? Or do you want to socialize over an activity? Yeah, hundred percent. And I, and you're nail on the head, right? And there's a reason why when we play a game, whatever the time on the box is, <laughs> you double it, <laughs> right? We played Underwater Cities and Beyond like the hours. Sun, yeah. and I think it took us a collective like eight hours. Now, mind you, there was a meal that was had in between there. Like we all ate, you know, ordered There's food a meal, or whatever. There was a kerfuffle and a with disaster. children, <laughs> and, children <laughs> and a toilet and plunger and so on things. Yeah. So like, 
but that's that's obviously again. There's a lot of conversations. We are on our phones. You watched Rocket League the entire time. Whatever. <laughs> there's a lot of other things going on. Cloud but, Nine, baby, they're back. Yeah. So like, I, and that's and that's true, right? There's there's a validity to that, but like, there's also sometimes where you're like, no, I mean like, like being more engaged. So I guess I wouldn't want every game to be like that, like fast paced all engaged, all encompassed all the time. I wouldn't want that. That would get exhausting, especially if you're playing multiple games back to back. But it is nice on larger scale games to be able to be like, all right, cool. We're all doing this at the same time. Seven Wonders, good example, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone is drafting game. You just take your stuff. We're all making the same decisions, and I'm giving you stuff or whatever, and everyone's got going on. Dinosaur Island? has nothing to do with experience anymore. No, it doesn't. Which is fine. Cause it's because a, we're socializing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Over an activity. We've got no topic. We like to play and play with each other. <laughs> we, Ooh, like to we like talk. to play with each other. <laughs> you guys are my favorite people to play with. We like to talk to each other. Weird. Well, that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna be it for this episode of the Boards and Scale Podcast. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, go ahead and like this video. And if you want to see more, please subscribe too. That really does a lot for us. When people are subscribing and leaving comments, please leave a comment. Comment whenever you want. Tell us your social security number. And the three digits on the back of your credit card. Yeah, just kidding. Don't do that for legal purposes. Children. I and I really to comment and on hey, all the videos when I'm gone. Beautiful. I'm literally, whatever you guys talk about, I'm going to give you all of my thoughts point by point by point. Beautiful. Timestamps and everything. Even on the snake Hell videos? Yeah. Hey, hey, speaking of snakes, snake. snake people, if you stayed and you're here and you're watching this, yeah, thanks. Holy heck, thanks. That's and it's super Obviously, cool. you're interested. Keep on watching. Yeah, maybe check out some of the other board game podcast episodes. Um, we should do one. The best games that feature snakes. That'd be cool. Rattlesnake Jake. I don't even I don't even know one though. That, oh that Arc feature Nova. snakes. Okay, feature snakes, <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Not that are about snakes. Yeah, no. Hey, yeah. In, in nine years, I will have designed a, a game about snakes. Don't hold me to it. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Bye.